Welcome, everybody. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, Clang and um, how we can use it on embedded Linux. Uh, you might have heard of you know, it being used on Android and uh, iOS. Um, so today I'm just going to present what I have done for it to work on uh, embedded Linux and what the limitations are and what different advantages and disadvantages are. Um, so this is uh, essentially the agenda. And uh, feel free to ask questions or uh, if you have any comments in between. Um, I would love it to be more interactive um, session. Uh, so we'll talk about um, uh, what Clang is and what the project's goal primarily are and um, how we can do uh, cross compiles using Clang and um, how far we can take it to, do, to make a system compiler uh, for, for embedded Linux. And uh, I've uh, primarily worked with Yocto as my framework. Um, so essentially, I'll also talk about how um, Yocto could be used to uh, you know, generate Clang-based SDKs and uh, use them. Um, and then I'll go over some of the uh, additional tooling that Clang provides in addition to the static compilers. And, uh, and of course, it also has uh, runtime, and the compiler runtime. And then um, I'll sh also go over how that runtime can be used instead of uh, GCC runtime um, in your applications if you wish to use it. OK. So um, what is Clang? Clang is actually uh, a front end for C, C++. Um, and it uses LLVM um, infrastructure uh, to generate the back end um, and the code generation. Primarily, it is uh, uh, C, C++ and Objective-C. Uh, so there aren't many other front ends. Um, and LLVM is actually a, a, a long living project Clang was uh, uh, added uh, afterwards. So it's um, um, a reusable infrastructure to do various compilation uh, technologies. People have used it for dynamic compilation, uh, for uh, various other use cases. Um, the latest release is 3.9. Um, most of my work is based on 3.8. Um, some people pronounce it as C-Lang. It is actually Clang. So I've included the uh, uh, how it is pronounced. So uh, the goals of the project are to be GCC compatible. Um, in fact, it uh, implements all the extensions that are documented by GCC. Um, and some extensions which are used in softwares um, and are undocumented um, they were missing, uh, but some of them are not uh, implemented because the project thinks that they are um, and they are not used as commonly and they are hard to implement. Uh, so we'll go over those a uh, couple of those um, extensions which actually came up uh, in Linux kernel, um, and it intends to be. Um, um, IDE uh, friendly, so it integrates into, um, or it has uh, one of the goals to integrate into different IDEs like Eclipse and Qt Creator and uh, others. Um, and it uses a, uh, a BST like license, a LLVM BST license. Nowadays there's a discussion actually going on um, to, to relicense it under Apache 2. Um, and so if you are interested in that discussion, it is going on on mailing lists these days. Um, and it conforms to ISO C, C, C++ um, primarily, so it doesn't support Fortran or any other language front ends, if you wish for. So um, it's um, actually library-based architecture. So if the whole compiler is um, consisting of several libraries, and the reason being that they consider uh, themselves to be embeddable and pluggable. Um, so you can write tools, basically, and, uh, and invoke all those libraries in your code if you wish to. So it's uh, pluggability is it's, uh, uh, in core of its architecture. Um, if you want to design more tools for code analysis or any other uh, tools, then it's very easy to use it and extend it. 
So you will see that um, everything is lib something. So you know, if you have a um, parser is lib parser, and um, you know you have uh, front end as libcfe, and everything is a library there. Um, and uh, user friendly diagnostics. So uh, this is one of the goal that they always want to be very friendly. Um, you know, many of you who do C++ um, would be knowing that you know you get very cryptic messages sometimes. Error is elsewhere, and uh, the messages coming are very cryptic, very difficult as a user. Um, so it tries to um, be very friendly um, to pinpoint the error messages when you are compiling um, the code. And, um, and it also actually um, offers fix-it hints so, uh, when it can. So it will um, actually um, point you what you could do to fix the code, which I find pretty cool. Um, but um, um, so um, it, one of the, uh, one of the uh, side effects of this uh, goal has been that GCC also has improved its di uh, diagnostics quite a lot. Um, starting 4.9, uh, 4.8, um, the, the whole diagnostic framework was rewritten, uh, and a lot of new diagnostics were added, and uh, even color. Uh, you can have the color diagnostics in GCC now, which was uh, a big taboo in the past. Um, so um, even today, actually, um, I compiled a program uh, uh, not long ago, and I see that uh, Clang still has uh, um, has pretty good um, uh, diagnostic uh, support. Uh, okay, so if you can see, um, so I have actually a. Uh, a small um, test case there. So it's intentionally written wrong. Uh, so there is a, a semicolon missing after you declare the structure. Um, but now if you compile this, for example, uh, you know, using uh, Clang, then you get the pinpointed error. So let's try what G, G++ tells us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. So, so somewhere the error is there, I know, but right now <laughs> I cannot scroll up. So. Um, Um, oh, you want to know the version? I don't know. It's not 2.96 for sure. So, so, Okay. I'm finding it a little challenging to see. I think the Clang is three dot uh, is um, you know four dot zero, which is upcoming release, and GCC is uh, uh, four dot uh, is six dot zero. Six dot two. Okay. So it's actually Arch Linux. So whatever Arch Linux provides me. Um, so it's fairly recent, um, both of them. Um, so the next, uh, one of the goals they have is uh, uh, to use less resources and uh, speedy compile. And um, uh, so one of the uh, tasks I did with that is I uh, used the WebKit. Uh, actually, there is a WebKit for VLAN project. So I compiled it using uh, Clang and, and uh, uh, GCC, Clang 3.9, uh, and GCC um, 6.2 again, using the Yocto framework. 
and um, uh, I didn't draw the graphs and percentages, but you can do that yourself. Um, so uh, Clang, it spends 2,297 seconds to compile, and uh, with GCC, it spends 2,838 seconds to compile it. So that's roughly, uh, I don't know, maybe around um, 30% probably, or something like that. Um, so it has uh, also got um, some of the um, options to split your debug information such that it can speed up the linking time. Um, so uh, obviously I didn't use that option to compile WebKit there, but if you use that option, I guess the, um, the linking time would reduce even further so you can uh, get it even better than uh, 2297. Um, so uh, minus G split dwarf is a uh, is a option that you would use if you uh, want your um, compile to uh, or sorry your link step to be a little faster. Um, so who is using Clang today? Uh, Debian Experimental has uh, um, it has an optional compiler. So you have around uh, ninety percent of packages in Debian archives which can be compiled using Clang. LLVM Linux project um, was initiative to uh, get the Linux kernel compiled with Clang. Uh, and um, so they have uh, done a lot of work um, in, on both sides where they made the kernel compiled with LLVM uh, Clang as well as there were patches that were required for Clang. Um, FreeBSD uses it as a, as a system compiler now, and uh, OpenMund revised on uh, Linux distribution, which uh, has done a lot of work, and um, they have switched since uh, 3.7 version of Clang, that uh, now Clang is their uh, uh, primary system compiler. And uh, we'll cover some of the open embedded uh, work that we have done here, and uh, it's being added there as an external layer as well. So um, the current norm, we have uh, you know embedded Linux is primarily cross compiled, and uh, GCC is a primary compiler, and um, you know it supports many architectures, and uh, there is uh, it's a very strong point for GCC, and uh, if you use one of those architectures, uh, you know it's a very um, to go compiler for all those. Um, there is a long list if you go there, um, you know, I listed a few of them here, um, but this list is, uh, uh, is more and it's ever growing. So whenever there's a new architecture uh, shows up, um, but primarily if you have a wide variety of CPUs to worry about, uh, you know, GCC is a pretty good choice there um, for that. Clang uh, right now has a limited set of architecture support. Um, primarily, it has um, ARM, ARM64, x86, x86-64, PowerPC, uh, PowerPC64, MIPS, and MIPS64, um, Coldfire, and there are a few others that I might have missed, but uh, it's not as extensive as, as uh, you will find in GCC, so be aware of the fact. So uh, how are the tool chains organized? So just the sequence, um, what are the components involved? You got uh, um, Binutils, uh, which is your binary utilities, and then you got the cross compiler, um, which provides you the C, C++ or any uh, <coughs> compilers, and then you have a standard system library. Um, you have a choice um, between glibc, uclibc, muscle, um, and then you have a debugger, pretty much GDB is in the game. Um, and uh, the build sequence looks something like this. So you have to have all the prerequisites. So uh, prerequisites include all support libraries that you need to build um, the compilers and uh, the supporting tools. Once you have that, you build your binutils, tools, then you bootstrap GCC, then you have some portion of kernel, essentially the API headers, um, and then you have libc headers because uh, there is a bit of uh, cache 22 to solve. So you um, fake around some startup files and create some dummy uh, .so files so you can build GCC. And that's where you do a full cross build. So GCC can do shared libraries and stuff. Um, and all this is done to make, it, make the GCC build system happy. Uh, so it is faking all those things underneath 
to enable all that support. And then you build, build uh, full libc, and then of course you build uh, runtime and stuff. So that's how the whole um, you know tool chain I explained in two minutes. But uh, it's a, it's a um, it's a complex uh, process to put together a cross tool chain based on GCC. Um, Clang comes actually with a, uh, it, there, it's already, it's a inherently a cross compiler. Um, so you use a single compiler actually to compile everything. It's so cool. Um, you, uh, I've been doing cross compiling for long, so um, I like the fact that I can just create a sim link and call it with the triplet that I, um, I have, and uh, it knows that it has to do cross compiling. So I don't have to do all the cross-compile builds and everything. In fact, the compiler I just showed you on my Arch Linux, I can turn it into a cross-compiler um, without uh, any issues, just creating sim links, uh, which are like you know ARM underscore Linux, Clang, and whatever. So, um, so in the grand scheme of things, if you look at the build sequence I just described, um, we still uh, remain same, but it's actually going to simplify the build because we don't have to do the, um, the, the full, these two-stage GCC bootstrapping and stuff. So um, finally, it looks something very simple where you build the binutils, you build Clang, you build um, the headers and uh, libraries, and then the, uh, actually this libc header should go away, uh, and the full libc and you have everything. So it simplifies the tool chains themselves, um, essentially. And um, if you care for more than one architecture, then you don't have to have two different cross compilers. Uh, you can just have one and use it. So um, if you want to do cross compilation on your uh, desktop for embedded Linux distributions, you can install Clang on any distribution you use. And then uh, you could. Um, uh, uh, download any of the pre-built tool chains from either Yocto Project or Linaro, which put together the uh, cross tools for uh, the architectures that Clang supports. And uh, Linaro does, of course, for ARM. Um, and you would then just install these tools. And uh, yeah, I have it in very small font, but I hope you can read it. Um, and then you just specify the target uh, and a GCC name. So there is an option to Clang. And um, you tell it what your triplet is. And that's it. And you, you are able to cross compile the applications using Clang. Um, why you install the cross uh, tool chain is uh, we'll cover it slowly. But uh, we have. Um, um, Th there are certain components which are still missing in the whole sequence. For example, it does have a built-in assembler, but it's not yet fully, um, you know, um, it can't do everything right now. So many times, many applications wouldn't work. So you tend to use the uh, Binutils provided assembler. Linker is the same way. It does have a LLD project, um, which um, works, um, which is still under development. So. Um, not everything would work, but you can fall back to use GNU Linker. Um, and that's why you use uh, the cross binutils and, um, uh, and to, to complete uh, the gamut of the things. And of course, you'll need the, uh, in this case, we are using the runtime, the compiler runtime also from the uh, GCC uh, toolchain. That's why uh, the cross toolchain provides that when you're building the application. Um, so um, this is just application only. Um, and um, as I just said, that you will use GNU binutils. And um, um, you could actually use the same setup. Now you have actually a cross tool chain. So essentially, you can build anything with it if you want. You can build the kernel. Uh, most of the kernel work can be done uh, using this cross tool chain as well, where you will deploy a clang to compile kernel. Um, and um, so it's uh, very easy to use in this way it, to do cross development. Um, so uh, not everything yet 
is compilable, as I mentioned. Uh, Linux kernel, there is a, uh, there was a lot of work done by um, uh, BN and others from Linux Foundation, and all those patches, I think most of them have been merged. Um, so they, there are certain, uh, uh, certain patches, I guess, which are still remaining, but um, I think um, there are, uh, um, most of the subsystems they are um, able to uh, compile using Clang. And um, x86 kernel, I think they ended, they ended up booting also, um, but uh, there is still some work left there. Um, System C library, glibc, there is a uh, work that is under progress to use Clang to compile glibc, um, but it's not yet complete as well. So uh, there is a wiki page if you want to contribute uh, uh, or look at the status, uh, you're welcome. Um, but it's still wor a work under progress. glibc community is uh, interested in getting that uh, uh, option to uh, compile glibc using Clang. So a hybrid approach is needed. As of now, you will need two compilers if you want to use, uh, create a full embedded Linux platform. Um, Chromium OS has done similar things. They have a Clang overlay, and uh, very similar to uh, what we will see, what I did in Open Embedded, where you can choose which compiler compiles what. Um, and. Um, uh, that uh, works uh, during these porting times when everything cannot be compiled. So uh, you can effectively choose which applications you would use one compiler or other. So uh, all this work for um, Open Embedded is in a uh, external layer. Uh, some of you who know Open Embedded, there can be uh, extra extra layers that you can layer on top. Um, and so this is called MetaClang, and all the um, um, work is housed there. Um, it has added a, uh, a variable you could set called toolchain, and you can choose if you want your application or your package to be compiled using GCC or Clang. Um, and then there is a global default. If you don't specify anything, then you can also set this globally so that it defaults to that. So you can also say, you know, I want everything to compile with GCC, but just this application, I would like to use Clang. Or you can do the vice versa, where you say, compile everything with Clang and um, just stick to these uh, few packages to use GCC. Um, then there are certain packages which don't compile with Clang, so they hard code the toolchain variable in there, so they don't offer the option for you to compile them with one or either. So um, that is the current setup at high level. So uh, building it is easy. You can all uh, just clone the, the um, Yocto project repo here. Uh, I've used the, uh, the Pocky, but you can use uh, Open Embedded Core or uh, any other distribution which are based on Open Embedded. Uh, you just have to add the Meta Clang layer, and um, that basically brings the Clang into your, uh, your uh, build, so um, you can then easily build it. Um, so there are uh, some things that are non-clangable yet, and uh, there is a list uh, I have uh, uh, towards the end of my uh, presentation that I'll show that uh, the list of packages that are yet not uh, clang ready. Um, but there are a few common uh, use cases that uh, you find um, which are not sp supported in clang, and you might find those. So. Um, some specific GCC ex extensions that are not implemented in Clang. Um, VLAs is one of those, and um, they, uh, there is an explanation why they don't support it. Um, as I said earlier, they think that it's uh, very less used, but it's very complex to implement in the compiler. So that's the reason why they don't implement it. Nested functions, uh, they were always bad. So um, they were not specified in the standards either, so um, Clang doesn't have it. Um, so most of the time, you know, people ended up cleaning up their code to not use nested functions. Um, and um, it also has one problem where it pretends to be, uh, it defines GNU-C to be 4.2, um, and that's actually a very old compiler, and it supports way beyond that. So if you define 
GNU C to be something newer, um, to like 4.9 or something, then it behaves a lot better to, to compile your applications. Um, but the problem is not that um, it should do it this way. Probably the application should look for the features they are looking for rather than checking the GNU C version and deciding whether what's supported or not. Um, but yeah, you will see that um, you know why it is why application is uh, suddenly uh, disabling or thinking that my compiler doesn't support a feature. The most probably reason is they are checking for this underscore underscore GNU C variable and uh, and making that decision. So uh, the right fix is to you know to really check for the feature you're looking for. Um, so many of the fixes we have done um, in. Um, either have been submitted to the packages upstream directly, um, and they have been accepted. Uh, and some we have hosted on the different open embedded layers, um, because either there is uh, no interest in upstream, or uh, uh, they are not accepted uh, upstream. So uh, we keep following up with the upstream on, on a possible solution for those kind of portability issues. Uh, some of them has been uh, fixed. They are upstreamable, but hasn't been upstream uh, just because of laziness. Um, so you can build um, images. Um, what you can do today, if you don't do anything, you can build uh, basically graphical images as well as console images, fairly complex images uh, using Clang. Um, Although uh, it won't be 100% Clang, uh, which is compiling everything in there. You know, it will use a different compiler for glibc, it will use GCC. And then uh, there are other packages that will be compiled using GCC. But somewhere around 80 to 90% packages, you will see you can compile using Clang uh, when you consider the system. Um, you can also generate SDKs, actually, uh, using Clang. Uh, open embedded. So what it will do is it will generate the SDKs with both the compilers. Um, um, it will have GCC as well as Clang in there. And uh, it exports two new variables um, called Clang CC and Clang CXX. So um, if you want to use that SDK and you want to make, keep it portable, which means you want to use one or another, and you want to test it, then you know you can just define uh, your CC in your environment to Clang CC and vice versa, so you can switch between the uh, compilers easily. Uh, so that's the reason for this to be uh, there. So all these are in the SDK environment. Uh, when you install the SDK, you will get all those uh, variables already in your environment. So I've done a little uh, example here, the, uh, the GNU Hello World. So it's fairly simple uh, to, to compile it using SDK and setting CC to be Clang CC. And um, you can easily then compile using um, a cross compiler based on Clang. Um, so uh, you can also use same to build uh, uh, a kernel. So I tried the LLVM Linux kernel. Um, which basically has all the patches, and I tried to build it for ARM64, but I ran into some compiler errors uh, when I tried. Uh, maybe it is fixed now, I'm not uh, aware, but um, and there you go, you can start contributing uh, patches to kernel if <laughs> you know uh, you, you are right there. So um, I, didn't, uh, um, I didn't myself bother to submit patches, but um, I think it's a good opportunity for some, some of uh, enthusiasts here who might want to use Clang. Um, so the talking of Clang, we have more tools there, actually. That's one of the strong factors uh, that you'll get with Clang LLVM. And one of them is that Clang has a static analyzer. Um, and um, you can easily uh, build it. Uh, along with your um, uh, the rest of the Clang tool suite. And I've just shown here how you would uh, run it on muscle C library uh, uh, package. Um, and um, it actually produces a very nice uh, HTML output. And you can basically go through it uh, 
uh, nicely looked for all the all the uh, you know the issues it reports. There are a lot of uh, false positives you will get. Um, so. I have uploaded actually a, a, a result there. So you know, offline when I upload my slides there, you can go and look for those. Um, um, so the muscle scan, I did report to the muscle community, and uh, at least two fixes came out of it. So that was not bad. Um, uh, these fixes were applied to the muscle upstream. Um, there are more uh, analysis, more tweaking can be done, and probably more issues can be figured out. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's easy to configure for any of the applications that you might be interested in. At least from the static analysis point, it's worth it. Um, so they, it it has more tools. Um, given the API nature of Clang, there has been a, s a slew of tools that has been written around the infrastructure. Uh, so there is a Clang check, actually. So you know, many places that I've worked, and maybe you already uh, are doing that as well. People have syntax checking, right? So people uh, will always say, uh, you know, tabs versus spaces and all kind of stuff. So Clang check actually um, it helps in that sort of scenarios. Uh, you can, you know, deploy Clang check and get rid of all those um, problems. Um, and it can be easily integrated into IDs, stuff like that, if you have IDs. So, um, um, and it's very uh, prompt in, res in also, it uses this fix it mode um, that I just explained that it can warn about those. So it integrates into that infrastructure. And it nicely tells you, hey, you got a space here where you, know, you have defined it to be a, a tab or something like that. So you can easily fix your code as per your coding policy, whatever you have. So you can encode that. Um, so Clang format is uh, actually a little bit more. It reformats your source code files. Um, uh, if you have that, again, the you know, commit policies that you like to enforce, and you want to convert you know, a large projects over there, uh, Clang format helps with it. Uh, you can reformat all your project and start from there, and then and deploy a Clang check on every commit. Um, and it also have a lint tool called Clang Tidy. So you can run Clang Tidy um, for your uh, development. So there are more tools. So I'll not cover all of them. Um, so th it, it's also providing some runtime. And we'll talk about the runtime a little bit more here. Um, and there is some sanitizer work that is pretty cool as well. Uh, GCC also has got sanitizers now. But Clang has got more, uh, and they started with this uh, um, this long before. So um, they are now actually getting into a much uh, advanced stages of um, in the sanitizers, and uh, they are becoming quite useful. So libc++ is actually a C++ runtime implementation that you know you know libstreet++. So it's uh, a, a direct um, a replacement for that uh, that is implemented by the project. And uh, it comes in two different um, libraries. One of them is the libc++ ABI, another one is libc++, which implements the STL. And um, there is another library for unwinding support um, called uh, LLVM lib unwind. Um, so as you can see, uh, you could specify minus STD option to Clang to choose which C++ runtime you would like to link to. Uh, and you can choose um, you know, stdlib to be libc++ or lib stdc++. Um, so it's a nice way to toggle between those two. Uh, one thing uh, you have to be careful is that um, it's not ABI compatible with libstreet++. So if you have an application which then loads another library which depends upon libstreet++, then you might not get it working together. So if your application needs a standard C++ library, it can be either libc++ <coughs> or it can be libstreet++. It can't be both. Um, so given that uh, you just do that analysis internally, you can get it to work. The good thing about libc++ is that it's uh, almost 50% smaller. And 
30% faster in execution. So, um, And uh, GCC has changed the libstate plus plus ABI in GCC 5. So that created uh, more problems for, uh, for Clang, which they actually fixed uh, in Clang 3.9. So which is uh, now it can deal with the uh, GCC 5 uh, transition from the old libstate plus plus ABI to the newer ABI uh, in order to support the newer C++ standards. Uh, GCC has to do that. So the other uh, component it provides is called compiler RT, which is uh, the C runtime. Um, so it is um, providing you all the compiler built-ins, and uh, it has a full support for libgcc interfaces. Um, and then it also has runtime for sanitizers um, that I'll just cover in the next slide. And um, also for profiling, there is a, a support for, uh, for supporting the profiling and coverage collection. So, um, so there are several sanitizers here. Address sanitizer is pretty good. And um, thread sanitizer, so you know, look through those. Um, they are easy to configure. And uh, uh, basically, there are just options that you will invoke with Clang. Uh, and you can utilize them. Um, but many of them don't work on all, all architectures, so that is um, a work in progress for many of them, but if you use ARM and x86, you are pretty much covered most of the time. Uh, but if you are on MIPS and PowerPC and uh, others, then you know they lag in getting all those implementations a little bit right now. Um, and uh, so uh, libunwind is actually a replacement um, that you could do for libgcc exception handling library that you have. Uh, so you could use uh, the libunwind, the LLVM uh, libunwind as a replacement for that. Um, it implements the HP libunwind that we all know, uh, all those interfaces um, functions. So what I did is I tried to create a binary that um, uh, would basically have um, you know no libstreet plus plus or any of the C runtime from uh, the um, from GCC run test uh, GCC compiler suite, and uh, and I was able to manage uh, to get a C plus plus application with exception handling and unwinding uh, in there to work by linking to um, um, stdlib the lib C plus plus for stdlib and um, and compiler RT to do the um, the C runtime, and uh, libunwind to do the um, exception handling and unwinding part. So uh, I know the fonts are a little small there, but um, um, what I've shown there is uh, I've uh, linked the application and dumped the the needed sections of the library, and you would see that you know it doesn't list either libgcc uh, in there or uh, libstreet++.so in there. So, um, so it can uh, essentially replace the whole runtime. Uh, you wouldn't require that in there. So um, the limitations, uh, not all packages uh, can compile with Clang yet. We talked about that. So I have a link here, at least for open embedded. There is a certain list of packages that uh, are non-Clangable -clang right now for various reasons. Um, and uh, the integration into the, uh, into the IDEs that we use in embedded Linux in general is work in progress. It works uh, with Eclipse to a certain extent, but then there are uh, others that it can uh, get integration into. And upstream kernel doesn't yet compile. Those are a few ones that I know of. Um, and But every day you see that the uh, you know, packages are getting compiled. Uh, so this list is shrinking as we move into future. So that's all I had. So if anybody uh, have questions or rants, yeah. Um, yeah. There is a kernel address sanitizer, which is yes. an user space address sanitizer, which is uh, used in, in the kernel. And now GCC uh, allows that. Yes. What about uh, the Clang? Uh, so, as I see, this feature is 
is an advantage of GCC above clan. That is true. Um, I think, um, as I said, um, you know, it doesn't yet provide that for kernel. There has been some, uh, I think, one discussion on that. I'm hoping that um, you know it will get that implemented um, sooner. Um, but I think um, I don't have any updates on whether you know this will get in there soon or later. But good point. Yeah. So you said that uh, some patches sent up strings were refused by upstream packages. If I understood correctly, you uh, some patches to fix compilation with Clang that were refused by some packages. Uh, they they are still under discussion. You can put it that way. And why why do they? Well, most of the times because it works, right? So um, works yes, right. So it works, and if um, you don't have any other use case, then why do we make my life hell, right? By changing the working code. So it's a maintainer point of view of uh, build and maintenance. Right. So you have to understand that he may not have uh, uh, the means and stuff to test it out, so he doesn't feel comfortable taking such patches. Any more questions? Yeah. Yeah, so you said that JobKit is building faster, but how, what about performance during the runtime? Does it run faster? If, if yes, by how much? If slower, by how much? So um, I plan to do that work when I go home. So I don't have first-hand experience uh, with doing the performance analysis, runtime performance analysis. But I would encourage you to look at what Phronix does. So whenever you know they come out with a newer version of either Clang or GCC, they run all this kind of um, benchmarks. So you can see the progress that has been made uh, in there. So I guess right now, if you believe those benchmarks and if they are done correctly, uh, you know it's another subject. But uh, <laughs> but I can just talk about the numbers. Uh, the numbers has been improving for Clang over the period of time, and right now it is in a position where it is. Uh, it doesn't matter. I think it outperforms uh, other compilers in other certain benchmarks. It doesn't in others. So. But if you look at the progress it has made from like you know 3.0 onwards up, you will see that it has been getting better and better at a much faster pace. Obviously, being a new compiler, I think that always happens. Yes. Uh, why, why is there an effort invested in another compiler to change and not the effort invested in making GCC better? Um. <laughs> <laughs> If you ask me, so, so actually there's not a lot of redundancy. Yes. And, and there is one thing the one can do better, and you see it does not compile the source code yet. And so if you would take the best of the other one to, to GCC, be, there, there's a lot of effort wasted. Yeah, so you have more choices, right? So essentially, it's about also. Um, um, it's, um, I'm, I like tools, so for me, you know, I like more compiler technologies, so I like GCC, I like Clang, you know, if there would be a third one, I'll look at that too. Uh, so I think essentially it gives you, uh, there are certain advantages as we talked about, right? It's uh, embeddable, so many people like it that they want to embed it into their own tools. Um, and, uh, and, you know, there were certain restrictions or stuff like that that, uh, you know, a lot of users had uh, felt in the past. And essentially, um, you know, GCC code base is a little older. So rewriting those, I mean, you could have done that, obviously. But it's similar amount of work than you know, uh, going out and doing it in a, in a new environment. But I believe that you know, it's, uh, it's a good thing to have multiple tools um, you know, so you don't have a single point of failure. And it actually also improves certain packages, it improves portability, right? So if you take uh, a package and you compile with both of them. So I didn't cover here, but there are several cases where uh, Clang found errors. Um, you know, it basically, people were using subscripts uh, as arrays, right? So, uh, sorry, as characters. So they will say um, A, and then they will expect it to convert that um, character to whatever the numerical value is, right? And all those kind of things, it found so many uh, hidden errors that were there forever. 
So in a way, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, I think uh, it's a better place um, being clang on the sides. Not so bad if you look at, you know, it also provides some level of competition. So other tools improve. And overall, the whole community benefits. That's my perspective. You may not agree, but <laughs> more questions. Okay, so I guess no more questions. Thank you.